So uh, now we'll enter the sixth week of this course and uh, in this week we'll be talking about second order ordinary differential equations. Okay? And uh, actually, actually the sixth, seventh and eighth weeks, eighth weeks all will be talking about uh, sec second order differential equations. Okay? So today, today I'll just get started with second order differential equations and uh, during this week we'll be talking about homogeneous and non-homogeneous equations. So in the first lecture, we will talk about the types of second order differential equation and what the solutions look like. Then uh, in the next lecture, we will talk about homogeneous second order differential equations and what are the properties of their solution. What are the properties of the solutions of homogeneous second order differential equation. Then in the third lecture, we will talk about homogeneous and non-homogeneous equations and uh, how how we can uh, what are the tricks you can get you you can use to solve homogeneous equations and then uh, and then and then we'll talk about a method of solving ho non homogeneous equations called variation of parameters and then and then finally we'll have some practice problems okay so let's start the lecture let's start talking about uh, second order odes so a second order differential equation okay it's characterized by a second derivative if you have y as a function of x then uh, second order differential equation has d square y by dx square. Okay, so then then it has a second derivative. Is, second derivative is the highest derivative that appears. And uh, second order differential equations are very common in all branches of science and engineering. Uh, you you have the spring equation. Okay, so that is a second order differential equation. You can have the quantum mechanics, the Schrodinger equation is a second order differential equation and so on. So just for example, if you take one particle moving in 1D, okay, then the quantum mechanical equation, the Schrodinger equation for this particle has a form minus h bar square by 2 m d square by d x square of psi of x plus v of x psi of x is equal to some constant e times psi of x. So, this is the time independent Schrodinger equation. Okay? Or uh, this, this gives you the stationary states where energy is fixed. So, E, e is uh, constant. And if you look, this is a second order differential equation in the variable uh, in the for the quantity psi. So, psi is your dependent variable and x is the independent variable. And V of x is some, some function of x which, uh, which is known as the potential energy function. Okay. So, this is a second order differential equation because the highest derivative of psi that appears is second derivative. So, in the other terms, you do not have any derivatives of psi and you just have psi to a constant. Another example is uh, what is called the, the diffusion equation. Okay, so, so, so here you have a constant, uh, you, you have a concentration which depends on x and time. Okay? And uh, what you write is that you write the partial derivative with respect to time, this is equal to d times, now uh, x is just let us say uh, I am taking the 1D diffusion equation, 1 dimensional diffusion equation, then this is just d square c by or dou square c by dou x square and again c is a function of x and t. So, the highest derivative of c that appears is a second order differential equation. This is actually a second order partial differential equation okay? and the highest partial derivative with respect to t that appears is uh, first order. Okay? So, this is one example. The, the wave equation will have a d square by dt square with a very similar looking right hand side. So, so essentially these sort of equations are something that you see see all the time. I will just, I'll just add uh, one, more, one more equation. So, the the simple harmonic oscillator okay. 
if you have uh, let us say one dimension again. So, then uh, you have d square x by d t square. So, uh, mm, times the mass ok. So, this is the force on the on the particle attached to the spring and this is equal to minus k times x ok. So, where k is the spring constant ok. So, now, now this is a second derivative of x ok. So, this is also a, a second order differential equation. Okay. Now, uh, now there are various types of second order differential equations. Okay. I'll just mention a few mention a few types of second order differential equations. Okay. So uh, you can have second order differential equations that are, uh, let's say, homogeneous. Or inhomogeneous or non-homogeneous. So, what does a homogeneous second order differential equation look like ok. So, I will just write one form. So, so suppose I write uh, I write my second order differential equation as y double prime plus a of x y prime plus b of x y equal to 0 and uh, similarly a non-homogeneous equation will look like y double prime plus a of x y prime plus b of x y equal to c of x. So, now, here I have used y prime as a notation for dy by dx and y double prime as a notation for d square y by dx square. a of x b of x and c of x are some functions functions of x. So, any differential equation that that has this form where you can write y double prime plus some function of x times y prime plus some function of x times y equal to 0. This is called a homogeneous equation. The reason it is called homogeneous is because each term has y up to power 1 y or any of its derivative up to power 1. So, this has the second derivative up to power 1, this has the first derivative up to power 1, this has the 0th derivative or y up to power 1. So, so the power of y or any of its derivative is the same for each of the terms ok. So, therefore, it is called a homogeneous equation and in particular this is called a this type of equation is called a linear homogeneous linear homogeneous second order differential equation ok. So, so I will just mark. So, this is an example of a linear homogeneous second order differential equation. The reason we said it is linear is because the power of y or any of its derivative in each term is 1. Now, the only difference between a homogeneous and a non-homogeneous differential equation is that you have this extra term c of x which I have written as c of x ok. Now, uh, now, now here again again this is a this is again this is also linear ok because the power of y in each term is 1 or 0 ok. The maximum power of y is 1. So, this is also linear, but this is non-homogeneous ok. It is non-homogeneous because the right hand side contains uh, it is not equal to 0 ok and it does not contain y to power 1. So, the right hand side does not contain y to power 1. So, there is a term that does not contain y or any of any of its derivatives to power 1. So, this is an example of a non-homogeneous equation. It is still linear because each term has has y up to a maximum of power 1 ok. So, we can think of second order differential equations we can uh, we can check whether they are linear or they are nonlinear and then you can check whether they are homogeneous or non homogeneous ok. And uh, there are some very nice properties of uh, of solutions of uh, of some of these equations that we will look at as we go along. Let us uh, once again mention that uh, we have linear versus nonlinear. 
okay. So, so in a linear equation will look like y double prime plus something times y prime plus plus uh, a of x times y prime plus b of x times y this is equal to c of x. This is a general linear second or second order differential equation. It's it need not it's it's homogeneous if c of x is zero. A nonlinear equation will have some could be there could be many many ways an equation could be nonlinear. But the simplest way I, I would say is if you have a of x y prime plus let's say b of x y square. Okay this is 0 ok. Now, uh, clearly this is a non homogeneous equation because you have y square ok. So, the y square term is a it is a non linear term ok. Then you could have homogeneous and non homogeneous ok. The homogeneous one uh, is given by y double prime plus a of x y prime plus b of x y equal to 0 or c equal to 0 and in this case you have y double prime plus a of x y prime plus b of x y equal to c of x not equal to 0 ok. So, so these are the typical types of second order differential equations that we will encounter. Further, further we might uh, encounter some second order differential equations where, where the coefficients where these functions a of x and b of x might have a specific form ok. So, suppose a of x b of x may be a constant. So, we could have a second order homogeneous linear equation with constant coefficients. So, this this would be so this would look like y double prime plus some constant I will just write it a times y prime plus b times y equal to 0. So, this is a second order homogeneous linear equation with constant coefficients. So, it always helps to identify what type of differential equation you are dealing with because for each type of differential equation there are uh, ways to there are very efficient ways to solve them ok. Now, uh, what about the solution? So, suppose you solve a second order differential equation ok then in general solution. So, so there could be a general solution. general solution will have two arbitrary parameters ok. And of course, you could have a particular solution this will have no arbitrary parameters arbitrary constants you can just say constants parameters or constants. So, what the message is that uh, if you want to get a particular solution you need two boundary conditions ok. So, you need need not not just one boundary condition, but you need two boundary conditions in order to in order to get the particular solution. Okay. So, so let us just take one example just to illustrate this point. So, so if I take y double prime plus 4y equal to 0 ok. This is actually a simple harmonic oscillator ok. Only thing instead of d by dt I have d by dx ok. Then uh, I can immediately see that uh, just by inspection y equal to sin 2 x or y equal to cos cosine 2 x or y equal to e raise to 
2 i x or y equal to e raise to minus 2 i x are all solutions of this equation. Okay. So, each of these each of these is a valid solution you can you can verify suppose I take the first derivative of of, uh, of this I will get 2 cosine 2 x if I take a second derivative then I will get 2 into minus 2. So, that is minus 4 sin 2 x. Okay. So, then you have minus 4 so I have sin 2 x and then you have plus 4 sin 2 x. So, it is 0. Okay. So, similarly you can verify that the cosine and the e to the 2 i x and e to the minus 2 i x also satisfy. Okay. So, how do you write the general solution? Okay. So, in order to write the general solution what you write is y is equal to I will write it as c 1 y 1 plus c 2 y 2. In this particular case okay, uh, if sin 2 x is a solution even some constant multiplied by sin 2 x is also a solution for this differential equation. Okay. And uh, we will see in the next class uh, that there is a certain property of this differential equation that allows you to write the solution this way. Okay. How do you choose y1 and y2? We have many choices for y1 and y2. So, the idea is that you can choose any two y1 and y2 that are linearly independent. Okay, so, you can take any two any two functions that are linearly independent. Okay, so, it should not be one should not be a constant times the other that is that is the only restriction you can write the solution. Okay, so, so, one way to write the solution would be would be to take uh, to take let us say you can take y equal to a sin 2 x plus b cosin 2 x. Okay, so, this might be one way okay, where a and b are constants which are which are determined by by the boundary conditions okay, or y is equal to a e raise to 2 i x plus b e raise to minus 2 i x. Okay. So, you could also write it in this way and uh, in fact, in fact there are also other ways to write the solutions. Okay. So, now uh, wh what we mentioned is that uh, is that these two solutions sin 2 x and cosine 2 x have to be linearly independent. So, similarly uh, e raise to 2, 2, 2 i x and e raise to 2 minus 2 i x are also linearly independent. Okay. So, so uh, there is a connection between differential equation and matrix. Okay. And uh, we actually saw that in the classes during last week where we actually use matrix methods to find out solutions of differential equation. And uh, you if you remember we used it for a system of differential equations with constant coefficients. And uh, notice that uh, this is a second order differential equation with a, co with, with a constant coefficient. Okay. So, so, I can actually write this in a slightly different way. So, I can write this as so, we can rewrite y double prime plus 4y equal to 0. Okay. So, you define uh, define y prime equal to y 1 okay. and uh, or, or, or actually let me do it this way. So, slightly differently I will write y 1 equal to y and y 2 equal to y prime. Okay. And uh, you recall from from last week that we said that this second order differential equation can be written as a set of first order differential equation with constant coefficients. So, so if I take this equation, then I can write this as uh, so y double prime is nothing but y two prime. So I can write this as y two prime plus four y one equal to zero. And the first and the other equation, I can write this as uh, y1 prime. So, so this y2 equal to y prime. Okay, y y is same as y1. So, I can write y1 prime equal to y2. So, minus y2 equal to zero. So, in other words, I can write this equation in the following form. So, y1 prime, y2 prime. Okay. 
so 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 if i take these to the right i can write this in matrix form okay so y1 prime does not have any term that depends on y1 but it has a it has a plus 1 that depends on y2 so y2 prime has a plus 4 or or it will have a minus 4 on y1 and it doesn't have any term that depends on y2 okay so so this is my and you have y1 y2 what we showed is that you can take the second order differential equation write it as a as a pair of coupled equations and uh, you can immediately see that uh, since this is a this is just by matrix methods you know that the solution looks like e to the lambda x okay where lambda if lambda from this equation so you will get uh, lambda square plus 4 equal to 0 or you will get lambda is equal to plus minus 2i so the linearly independent solutions will look like e to the 2i x and e to the minus 2i x you will have e to the lambda x so it will be e to the 2i x and e to the minus 2i x and you can find the corresponding eigen vectors and you can solve this equation okay so 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 this i just wanted to illustrate this point that uh, because this was a linear homogeneous different second order differential equation with constant coefficients okay you could actually have just used matrix methods that you learned from first order differential equations and solve this solve this system of equation and notice that this solution is the same as what we had here a e to the 2 i x and b e to the minus 2 i x okay so so uh, i'll stop here for today okay so in the next class we'll talk more about uh, homogeneous uh, second order differential equations